Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a little problem I'm having here. So this really wasn't intended to be a video in itself, but since I ran into this problem, I figured others are running into it. So uh, this comes with printing smaller pieces, because as you see here, I have a rather complex smaller piece, and this didn't come out. I'll put in the upper corner what it should look like, because there should be a band around this. However, um, this really didn't come out. Now, what this is for, this particular piece, is it mounts, it's designed to go on to um, uh, an eighth inch or about a three millimeter uh, bit to kind of blow the stuff out of the way and cool the uh, material. But the problem is I can't get it to print. Now, I've tried this on the Model Price Mini. I've tried it on the tar uh, Tarantula here. And so it hasn't worked out. So I'm going to go into Tinkercad. I'm going to mess with this a little bit to see if we can't do it a little bit better. Now, I have read on some forms uh, with this piece that really it needs to be printed on an STL printer uh, because of the shape. But I I'm sort of getting pretty close with this. I think maybe if I do some modifications. So tell you what, let's hop into Tinkercad. Let's make some modifications to see if we can do a better job and then come back and try printing it out and see what happens. Okay, so we've now imported the fan uh, STL. And a couple things that I noticed right off the bat is there seems to be some artifacting on the face of this. And also the fact that on this blade, this, this uh, sort of... Um, shade line doesn't run across on these so uh, again i'm a little bit concerned after looking at uh, this on here how watertight it was now cura didn't complain about it being watertight but i'm wondering if that's part of my problem in, in printing it uh, the other piece is is um we also noticed that this isn't perfectly round and for something that's going to spin at a high rate of speed uh, it's just off by a little tiny bit but uh, that could be a problem so we're going to end up fixing that uh, a little bit. Well, I'm going to end up fixing that right now, 25.48, uh, just to make sure everything is um, copacetic uh, in this. And we notice that it's uh, 4.76 tall. So one of the things is, is I sh as I showed um, at the onset, that this outer ring did not print. And part of the reason this outer ring did not print is how thin it was. And so this is one of the pieces I'm going to attempt to fix in this model. So what I want to do is I'm going to pull in a cylinder now. And I'm going to make this cylinder one of a different color. So we're going to turn this guy red. And I'm going to make this 4.76. So he's as tall as this uh, other object. Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I want it to stand a little bit proud um, in the XY. So I'm going to make this 26. And I want to make this... 26 because I want to make sure that it's um, large enough to kind of I can see it go around the object. Now I'm going to put this up to 64 sides and then I'm going to turn this into 10 segments. So I want a really solid circle. I'm going to leave bevel at zero because I'm going to want this to be um, pretty square for the way it's going to print. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate this guy and I'm going to bring it out here. Now, one of the pieces is I have a, a 0.4 nozzle size, so 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So as it extrudes plastic, it's going to be in increments of 0.4. So if I do two shells or two rounds, that's going to mean 0.8 millimeter. And then if I do three, that's going to be 1.2 millimeter. So in other words, three times 0.4. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an outside ring that's approximately three shells big. Um, because I'm going to print this as a solid, but I want it to come out in, in, in an even number of my nozzle as a multiplier, if that makes sense. So one of the things I'm going to have to do is subtract uh, 1.2 millimeters from 26. So that's going to be 24.8. So I'm going to make this 24.8 and then make this 24.8. And I'm going to turn this into a hole. And again, we have matching geometries. Oh, the other thing I want to do is I want to put this up to six. So I punch a nice hole, clean hole through here. So now what I'm going to do is um, I am going to, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to align this. And so that's aligned, that's aligned, and then now what I'm going to do is group these so I have a nice hole, and here we go. So now I'm going to bring this over to this guy, 
And again, I'm going to highlight all of this and do my align so I get everything just perfect. And there we go. And because we can see red all the way around, uh, and we can see a little bit of orange in there, so that's good. So we'll have a good watertight fit with this. And then let's go ahead and group this together. And so it's probably going to think a little bit on the grouping. There we go, because this is a fairly complex object. Um, now, one of the things you'll notice, I'm a little bit interested in seeing if we zoom up, see this little ridge around here. I'm not liking this. This is the way it's come together. Um, I'm going to actually change this around a little bit. So I'm going to undo this join. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reselect this object and move it over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump this up. Um, I'm going to bump this up to five. I'm just trying to think aloud here. Um, actually, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add two to this. I'm going to make this... Uh, six point seven six and then I'm going to bring this back over here and again I'm going to use my centering now there's a little bit of logic to this and I'll share this with you in a second as I move through this and we get this centered I want this perfectly centered and then what I'm going to do is join these because sometimes the join on this is rather odd um, and, and obviously I'm just kind of looking at the object so you notice that I would have a problem now printing this without supports because these fins are not going to originate on the bed but that's okay because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull in a box and I'm going to make this box basically 30 by 30 if I get if I click on the right thing by 30 and then I want to make this box a height of one millimeter and then I want to slide this this box under here because what's going to happen is this is going to now shave off because remember I added two millimeters to the height and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this box again and then I'm going to tell it to why is this? I want to make sure that this I want to make sure that this guy does not seem to be sitting flat on the bed. So that now should be flat on the bed and the workspace. And then now this should be zero. This should be flat. Why am I? Oh, I think I'm moving the I'm moving the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Uh, so I am at zero on the bed and I'm at 0 0.31 here so I need to make sure that that's zero make sure I'm getting the right things not not the offset to the grid uh, alright so that's now set so that should take one millimeter off the bottom uh, which should actually touch that uh, and set that right down Just trying to see um, Actually, you know what? I'm going to try something here, folks. So I've made this one millimeter. I am going to try making this, let's see if I make it 1.1 millimeter. Now that's going to cut off a little bit of the object, but what that's going to do is that's going to force um, Tinkercad to kind of um, reface the model, if you will. And remember I was talking about these, I didn't like these, in fact they don't go all the way across and I have these attributes. Now it won't fix these attributes if this happens to be a problem with being watertight. But it should do something with these. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm also going to make this 1.1 uh, high. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up uh, by 5.76 and then move this across. I can select it here and move this across. Now this does not seem to be, I think I'm going to have to 
decrement this by 5.76. I don't have to make this 5.66. There we go. Um, and then just for, to make this all nice and clean, I'm going to do an align just in these dimensions, just so everything sits square. And then what I'm going to do is now do a join of this, and this could take a well, it's pretty quick. Now I still have these lines here, which is interesting. So the artifacting might not be have been too bad, but one of the things I now know is I've got clean lines with this circle sitting across here uh, to these fan blades. So I tell you what, I'm going to go. Let's. Um, Let's go ahead and export this. And well, I'm going to name this um, CNC Fan V2, just so I've got the name. And then let's do an export. And we're going to export it as ST. All right, now I've already got Cura open. And uh, let's open this, this version. And then let's pick the tarantula again for machines. And then let's load the model file. And now let's go ahead and open it up. All right, so this this actually looks pretty good in uh, open in, in in Cura. So one of the pieces I I am going to plan to print this at 0.2 millimeters, uh, top and bottom thickness. Since I want it as a multiple of two, I'm going to go 0.6, and uh, shell thickness I am going to go 1.2 two and see what happens and then I'm also going to do a fill density of a hundred so I want this to be a solid piece of plastic I want no supports um, I also want to slow this down I want it to print real slow because I don't want it to be jerking around and I'm gonna run a temperature of 215 because I want my PLA to be pretty moist and I'm going to kick this temperature up a little bit to 70 because it's such a small object. Um, so one of the things I want, to, I want to do here is I want to look at the layers. So we're going to have 22 layers. And it's basically uh, going to be a solid object, as you can see. And notice how it comes and steps its way around. Now, one of the reasons, uh, actually, I want to take a look at this. I'm thinking about doing this even at a 0.1 layer height. So now that's going to give me 44, 13 minutes for one. I actually think I'm going to try this at 0.1. The reason for that is right here, because this fan blade is made out of individual steps. And the higher the resolution, i.e., this 0.1, the, the finer these steps are going to be. So I'm going to give that a shot and try it at a 0.1 layer height. And again, I'm going to print this pretty slow so we see how it comes out. Uh, and you kind of see how it's coming together here. And you can see the tool moves. Now I want to make sure I've got retraction on. Um, retraction is going to be kind of crazy on this. Um, I'm not sure if my retraction, oh, this, this is my internal retraction distance. Uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, go to open expert settings. So I want to look a little bit more. So minimum travel, I am going to lower uh, minimal travel for retraction to 0 0.05. Uh, minimal, so I'm going to leave the rest of this the same. Um, and see how that does. Now, one of the things you'll notice that the shape, it, it, did it really change the shape? I'm not sure if it did or not in changing the retraction. But I like how this, this is coming together as a model, uh, if you will. Let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at it transparently and see how it uh, looks looking into the model. Looks pretty good, I think. And then um, again, X-ray. Okay, so everything looks good on this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some G-code out of this. And uh, we're going to send it to the printer and then we'll see how it comes out.
Okay, welcome back. So we printed out a few of these. We got them to work, which is uh, actually pretty good. And I've got one here um, on a bit. Now I've had to clean these up a little bit. Um, retraction, I think, as you can see here, and I'll see if I can't zoom in on it, uh, wasn't the best. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not an expert at retraction on very small objects. So I've gotten pretty good at setting and guessing at retraction because it's a little bit of a black art with regards to larger objects, but this smaller object, as you can see, uh, has quite a bit of stringing going on. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I, I was a little bit concerned of setting the retraction too low uh, for the fact of jamming up the printer than having to take all the time to clean up the printer, so I just decided to risk it a little bit more and, and do some cleanup afterwards, and the cleanup wasn't too bad. Now. The one thing, in, in full disclosure, I tried to do, use some heat on one of these to clean it up, and that was a bad idea because it took almost zero heat and deformed. So you really have to do a manual cleanup. Now, it took a little bit to get this in here, and you have to be careful you don't cut your fingers trying to press it on. So what I did is kind of set it in a vise and kind of tapped it in uh, with a hammer. Uh, so, tell you what, I, I'm a little bit curious. I was going to end the video here, but I decided let's go over to the CNC and actually see this work. Does it spin up to 20,000 RPM? Will it fly apart? What will it do? So, tell you what, let's take a quick look and go see because I am going to do another video on actually using this. I'm not going to cut anything, but I just want to spin it up and I want to see what this does. So, let's head over to the machine. Okay, welcome back. So, uh, we took a look at the bench at the uh, finished product. Now we actually have it on a bit right here. Now I've already spun this one up just to make sure and one of the things I, I have safety glasses on and I can't recommend safety glasses enough you should have it on anyway but this is PLA spinning at about 20,000 RPM. So I don't know if this is a good idea or not but what uh, I'm going to do is I want to kind of keep this in here but I've got the two temperature probes on there and the second temperature probe is actually this one and then the, the first temperature probe is that one over there. So I've got about 0.6 degrees difference on the temperature probe. And basically what I have these is, is taped down. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is start this up and let this run for a minute and see what happens with the temperature, see if there's any cooling effect. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. And so let's see what happens. So right there we're at we're at full RPM and the other one's still reading a little bit cooler but this is actually I can with my hand holding this meter I can feel the air that this is pushing and it's uh, quite cold or cooler than uh, the other so we see number one raising in temperature I think you can see that in here and it doesn't seem like I'm doing too much too much difference in temperature. Now I'm not applying any heat either, uh, but I would suspect with that much current flowing past it, uh, or you know when I say current, I'm talking about air current flowing past it, that would lower it because again, I, I, I can't express enough the draft that my hand right here is feeling from this. Um, so, but uh, anything, it looks like it's going up in temperature, which is rather odd. Now it might be conducting a little bit from the spindle itself, thinking about it, maybe a degree or two passing down as the spindle is warming up. Um, so I don't know. This is rather interesting. Um, so again, we're sitting at about 67.5 degrees. So I really don't see it going down, but it could be passing, you know, a little bit of temperature again from the spindle down. So I don't know what to think about this just as of yet. I'm going to do another episode where uh, I actually do some cutting. We're going, to, we're going to try cutting some stuff. I'm going to turn this down for the time being. Move this over here a little bit. So the main piece of this, I kind of want to watch the temperature. The temperature is still rising on that for some reason. Um, where it's staying pretty constant on the, the bed over there. So I got these both taped down. This is a piece of acrylic, so it shouldn't be conducting too much heat. Um, but it did t did definitely take, you know, roughly about 20,000 RPM. I think that's about what this spindle was running at. Um, 
so kind of interesting. So it actually rose in temperature with this. So uh, it's on there pretty good. So you can see I'm turning it here. I've got the uh, the machine locked out. So uh, but 68 degrees. So I don't know what to think. I'm going to try this. Uh, I'm going to do another episode where I actually cut some stuff with this. I've actually printed a few of these up. Um, and you probably should print a few of them up because I already broke one trying to get it on here. Uh, it takes a little bit of finessing to pressure fit this on because this is really f uh, fit on there. The other pieces is I, I tried heating it up and um, you know with the very thin walls of this it just turned into goo very quickly. Uh, so it, again a little bit of finessing. So. Uh, but we were able to get it to work, we were able to get it to print, and we got it on the machine, so definitely a good thing. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, hey, be sure to subscribe over there, Swag Shop up there. Hit me up in the comments, let me know what you think. Again, safety first on this. This thing's spinning at a god-awful speed, uh, so a lot of risk here. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, so I, I'm, I'm not uh, overly recommending this. Uh, but I do typically run this machine with a, a shield on it so I'm a little bit less concerned so when I do do my experiments of actually cutting material with it it will have that shield on it and you'll see that so be sure to stay tuned for upcoming episode where we actually put this baby to work so cheers see you in the next episode please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects